53 days ago, I started working on a project called Doge House, which started as a VS Code extension that added drop-in audio to VS Code, aka Clubhouse. It didn't really work that well though, so I decided to pivot and make it a website. Somewhere along the way, I had the vision for this to be more than just a Clubhouse clone. It could also be a Twitch clone, but with no video, and instead you live stream audio rooms, and everything is Doge themed. Combine this with the fact that I was starting to really enjoy coding it in Elixir, I said to myself, why not? Let's continue going. Let's build it out. Let's make this the next Facebook. So welcome to the Zeroith Doge Log. This is going to be the series where I talk about the development and the business side behind building Doge House from what started as a joke to a billion dollar unicorn company. For some reason, I'm just ready to go hard AF on this project. Like, can you imagine people's faces when they hear about a Doge themed social media website? That's going to the moon. Anyway, that's enough games, let's talk business. So initially my plan was to raise some money and hire contractors to help accelerate the development of the project. Because now is a really prime time. Because Clubhouse is only on iOS, and Twitter Spaces is still in beta. And it's not always going to be that way. So now is a perfect time for Doge House to swoop in. But after talking this over with a friend, he convinced me that it's better, instead of trying to hire contractors right away, to go through an accelerator build out a founding team, and then wait and raise a large round later on. Jason Calacanis, who is a pretty big investor, somehow found out about Doge House and wanted to have a chat about it. So we had a meeting and he invited me to his incubator called Launch. The deal is he'll give you $100,000 and mentorship in exchange for 6% of your company. And low key, I do need some mentorship in the VC world, so I am highly considering this. Now let's get back to dev stuff, because let's be honest, who really cares about equity this, vest that, when we could be arguing about JavaScript frameworks. So this is the current state of the website. And if you're like, Ben, that doesn't really look like the next Facebook.com. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Like the UI isn't terrible. It's, it's decent, you know. But the thing is, it, you don't look at it and think, wow, that's amazing. And I didn't put too much time into the UI, but even if I did, I'm really not that great at UI. And you know, I just slapped buttons everywhere. So what I did is I hired a designer to build the design system and all the mockups for Doge House. So we're keeping dark theme as our default color scheme and using Doge blood as the accent color, but I'm sticking all of these in CSS variables and I am theming everything with Tailwind. So this is gonna be very easy to switch out the colors if we need to. And later on, I actually see having a section where you can customize the color to your liking. So theoretically, if there's some heathens out there, you would be able to do a light theme. I asked the designer to mock up the homepage first. And as you can see, this is quite a big step up to where we are now. So this has become the number one priority. These are the components that we've done so far. We're putting everything in storybook. And I say we because I built this button here, but the project is open source. And all the other components so far have been added by open source contributors, which has been absolutely awesome. This is the workflow that I'm using to just streamline this entire process. So I had the designer break out the components into individual pieces that are also on their own Figma frame. And you can actually link directly to these Figma frames. And then I just create a GitHub issue that links to the individual components and then what, you know, keep track of which ones we've done so far. And then when someone creates a PR of this, I have it set up so Vercel will automatically deploy this and create a preview. So you can just click on this and it'll take you to the storybook version of what they added. And then you can go in and you can spot check on the component and see if this looks good. You might also have noticed in the mockup that we have a new logo here. This is actually something that my mom did. She's a logo designer, so she helped out with that. And we actually went through quite a few iterations to come to this because I didn't know exactly what kind of doge I wanted as the logo. I thought maybe I wanted kind of an icon version of him, or maybe I wanted him inside of a house or a rocket. And I did lots of different, or we did a lot of iterations that look similar to these things over and over. But what it came down to is these felt way too complicated for logos. In my opinion, I really like ultra simple logos that are just really sleek. And so when I saw this one, I knew this was the one I wanted. This is the logo that would be the face of a billion dollar behemoth company. Since the new design looks quite a bit different than the current website, and I also want to re-architect how I'm doing some of the React things, because this used to be a VS Code extension, and so there's some really ugly parts still, I decided to put this in a new folder, and also to switch it over to Next.js while I'm at it, since it used to use Create React App. So all the new development is in a new branch called New Design, 
And so the current website is in Kafta, but the new Next.js site is in Kibi. Or, you know, if I turn on my Arabic accent, Kibi. For feature development, I was able to pretty quickly add a chat feature by keeping it really simple. So when I say something, it just broadcasts the message to everyone that's in the room. It doesn't actually store anything. So if I come over here, I can see the message, great, but let's say I refresh the page. Um, I actually don't see any of the old messages, which is great. This matches the behavior of Twitch. I'm fine with that. And of course, I can send more messages. But the only thing is being able to like actually have a log of messages may be necessary for reporting. And when real people started using this for the first time, I found out pretty quickly I needed a throttle because they just love freaking mashing on their keyboard. Uh, so now you see I have that like little pop-up that comes up and it throttles you every second. So I just keep the timestamp of the last message you sent and you can't send more than one every second. I thought dealing with daytime stuff might be a little bit scary for scheduled rooms, but so far everything's been okay. Uh, but maybe I just haven't noticed the bugs. What I'm doing is server side in Elixir. I'm using this column called UTC Datetime USEC. Um, and it does exactly what you think it does. It stores the date as a UTC date um, in microseconds. And the front end, basically everyone is in a different time zone. And so I take that, and I think this is like in an ISO 8 something something format. And all I do is I call new date. And this will get you the date and the local time for that user. And then you're golden. You can format the date to whatever you need it to look like. This is live on the website, but it's not 100% done because I still want to add things like people being able to RSVP to events. And also for like me, I'm hosting this, but I want to have co-hosts, but I am not finishing it quite yet because the new design may change some things. So I want to finish that first and I'm going to come back to this. There's been a couple bug reports of people not being able to hear some other speakers and I've been able to squash at least one of them. The culprit was how I was handling the audio autoplay policy that is in pretty much every browser now, which requires the user to interact with the web page before you can play audio on it. So what you do is you try playing audio and if it throws an autoplay error, you can show a pop-up to the user and have them click on something, which counts as an interaction, and then you can try playing the audio again. And this works great, but I made the bad assumption that once this happens once to somebody, that they won't need to do it again until they refresh. If you interact with the website on your phone and then lose connection, which I can simulate by just going into airplane mode, and then if you regain connection, you have to re-interact with the web page again. And so I would need to show the pop-up again, but I wasn't doing that because I thought you already had done the pop-up and that you already interacted. So I just need to make a quick change in my code, which was easy to do, and allow you to see the pop-up as many times as that error comes up, and then bug was solved. When I first did a video on Doge House, I shared a roadmap of the things I was thinking of doing in the future, but I had a lot of questions, but now I have a better understanding of what I'm actually going to do. So first off, I mentioned X state because I felt like the state management was a little bit shaky, but now I feel like it is really good and I don't think we need it. So number one, I'm using Zustand and React Query and that combo is working quite well. Secondly, notifications. I think notifications are very, very important, but I think it's gonna stretch the project too thin to try building an app and the website at the same time. So I wanna start on the website, get it really good, start getting some traction on the website before I even start the app. A lot of people suggested doing a PWA. The problem is all I care about is push notifications and you can't get push notifications with a PWA on iOS. And so you're already losing half the people. Maybe it's worth doing that for Android, I don't know. I also looked into web notifications, but they just suck so much, it's just not gonna happen. Now, as far as Electron, Electron's gonna happen pretty fast because it's already really easy to set up. Somebody already created a shell, and so global keybinds are probably gonna come very soon to that. And then number one priority right now is to get the new design in, make it look beautiful, and start getting the regular features working really great. And when that's good, monetization's gonna hit, and then recording rooms. Lastly, I just want to thank everyone who's contributed so far. We've had over 70 contributors, which is absolutely insane. I never thought we'd get this many. And it has enabled stuff like we have translations now in Doge House with tons of different languages, which has been absolutely amazing. That's it for this Doge log. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one as we get closer to the moon.